lesson 12.4. In the last lesson, we talked about Eastern Europeans. In today's lesson, we'll take a look at how Chinese immigrants uh, helped to develop Canada and its complex identity. So stick around and let's learn something. Twelve point four today has us taking a look at how Chinese immigrants contributed to the development of Canada and specifically Canada West is what we're going to be talking about. So our Chinese immigrants to the West. And when we take a look at the story of Canada, some of our earliest immigrants to Western Canada were the Chinese. And that's because in 1858, there was a gold rush in British Columbia, which required the CPR, the Canadian Pacific Railway, to be built. And many came over to help build that railway. They stayed to then help continue to build Canadian society. And they were affected both positively and negatively by the immigration policy that Canada had in place. I mentioned that they came to build the CPR, the Canadian Pacific Railway, and many of them chose to stay after its completion in 1885. They stayed to work as cooks, as storekeepers um, in the salmon stocks, and they stayed as farmers as well. They moved to towns along the railway where they opened up businesses. So we've got like uh, laundries were set up, so like laundromats, and restaurants obviously were set up. And it wasn't just a Western Canadian um, location that Chinese immigrants came to. They also went to Eastern Canada as well. Montreal, Toronto, Ottawa, Hamilton, they went there. But few moved to the Maritimes. So they, stick, they stuck mainly to the larger cities of Canada. Um, on this list, we should also include Western Canadian cities of Vancouver, Edmonton, and Calgary. They came to work on the railway. That's what they did. They worked on the Canadian Pacific Railway. They were encouraged to come. The government of Canada wanted them to come. But after its completion, Canada's immigration policy on Asian immigration changed. Many believed that Japan, China, and India, those three parts of the world, did not fit in with the idea of a Canadian society. You can hear it in my voice. I've got the air quotations there. Many believed that the customs and cultures of the Japanese, the Chinese, and the Indians were too different and didn't fit Canadian society. And some believed that um, these immigrants that were coming over from China, Japan, and India, they were willing to work for, le for lower wages and that would take jobs away from people that were already here. In response to that, in 1885, the government of Canada introduces something called the Chinese head tax. And you will look at this in grade 9 social studies, but we're introducing it to you here in grade 7. It began at $50 per person and it rose to $500 by the end of the uh, Chinese head tax. Now, would you, you're thinking, oh, $50, that's not bad. $500, you know, that's not bad. You can buy um, the newest PlayStation or the Xbox for just over $500, and you're probably thinking that's not bad. You need to understand, these are 18, late 1880s, early 1900s dollars, so this is really expensive. When they were making a dollar a day, that, that, that takes a long time to save that kind of money, right? So they introduced this head tax, making it very difficult for Chinese immigration to occur here in Canada. And they further uh, made changes. They made further changes to the immigration policy in 1923, where all Chinese immigration stopped completely. They did not allow anybody from China to enter into Canada. And you'll learn um, in grade nine social studies, they did the same thing with India too. 
Um, now they didn't come out right and say no. No Indians are allowed to come in. They made it a policy so that no um, that you had to catch a direct ship from India to arrive in Canada. But they knew very well that no such ship shipping line existed. No route existed. So they did that. But you learn more about that in Grade Nine Social. And this policy of stopping all Chinese immigration lasted until the late 1940s. And if you look at many of our Chinese immigrants and businesses and restaurants and families today, a lot of our Chinese families can trace their roots back to this late 1940s when immigration from China was opened up again and we see an increase in immigrants coming from there. And the Chinese immigrants that were coming over to Canada, they went into Chinatowns. So like other cultures, and we've seen this with the Eastern Europeans in the previous lesson, Chinese immigrants wanted to live near their family and friends. They wanted to live with people who spoke the same language and shared the same customs and same culture. So they moved into these neighborhoods and these neighborhoods eventually become Chinatowns, which are very distinct neighborhoods with shops and they have various cultural areas too. And all of Canada's major cities include Chinatowns. Um, it's very common here in Edmonton. You drive down 97th Street and you will go through Chinatown on your way to downtown Edmonton. It's a neighborhood very distinct. Chinese stores, cultural areas, uh, like I said, very unique. All right, I want you to head over to your notebooks and complete the questions for this part of the chapter.